So plenty of entertaining programs and terrific boxing action upcoming right here on Showtime. We hope you can join us. Coming up next, a main event that has the makings of a thrilling affair. This hot rivalry finally resumes in the ring between Kostya Zhu and Shambay Mitchell. For more on their first fight, to Al Bernstein, Al. Well, thank you, Steve. You know, it's been a long and winding road to get to tonight's Costa Zoo Charmaine Mitchell rematch. Injuries, delays, sight changes. But the reason so many have been resolute in making it happen is because three and a half years ago, these boxers gave us evidence that they can collectively make a great match. And they more than piqued our curiosity about who is ultimately better. On February of 2001, Costa Zhu and Charmbay Mitchell appeared focused for their highly anticipated unification bout. However, only moments before entering the ring, Mitchell had complained of aggravating an old knee injury, putting this fight in jeopardy. But from the opening bell, it didn't seem to hamper his attack. Pretty good combination to the head by Shambay Mitchell. Mitchell scoring and the crowd going wild. All the press row people have Mitchell ahead. For the first two rounds, the slick and speedy Mitchell impressed the judges and frustrated the slower but stronger Zoo. Mitchell coming forward. Uppercut by Zoo on the inside. Oh, Mitchell goes down. It's a slip. And some real roughhouse tactics there by Zoo. There's a good left hand by Mitchell. Right on the head, just before the bell. As Mitchell limps back to his corner, can see the scar. He's basically working on one leg. It's a matter of debate whether Mitchell's knee began to deteriorate or Zhu figured out his opponent. Nevertheless, Zhu dominated the sixth and seventh rounds. Big left hook by Pasha Zhu. A quick right by Zhu to the hand. This is an alley fight. Both of them walking the punches, Steve. Wild exchange, and the roughhouse stuff continues. Oh, a takedown by Zhu. No knockdown, and he went down with a thud. He's hurt. Mitchell's hurt as he's hobbling around on his left knee. I can't hardly move, bro. You want to go out this way? It's up to you. I can't move. Okay. Are they going to stop it? Yeah, they stopped it because of the injured left knee, and Kostya Zhu celebrates. Well, I just told my corner that I wasn't really feeling my leg, but I didn't want to stop, and they wanted to stop it. But I never wanted to stop, man. I told the doctor that I didn't want to stop, and the doctor just said, you know, Sean Bay, it'll be another day. He come to the ring, no excuse. No excuse, you have to fight or, or die, whatever it's it happened. So a first fight in which both men were able to get some things done during portions of that fight, and that's one of the reasons why this makes such an interesting rematch, Steve, because we could see glimpses of what could have been a terrific match. All right, Allah, without question, a fight that went into the books as a seventh-round TKO for Kostya Zhu, but for all who actually saw it, a fight that ended inconclusively. It took more than three and a half years, but the rematch is finally here. Coming up next from the Glendale Arena, just outside Phoenix, Arizona, the hotly anticipated second go-round between Kostya Zhu and Shambay Mitchell with the IBF 140-pound title on the line. Shambay Mitchell has been waiting almost four years for this night after his disappointing loss to Zhu in February 2001. Mitchell could have sunk. Instead, he kept active, fighting often and against top-level opposition. In fact, it can be argued that at the age of 34, the southpaw has never been sharper. While he's counting on Kostya Zhu being 100%, Mitchell's activity and Zhu's inactivity could turn out to be the key factors in this fight. Despite his inactivity, Kostya Zhu remains the king of the talent-laden junior welterweight division. But while Zhu has been on the shelf due to a pair of major injuries, fighters like Mitchell, Arturo Gatti, Floyd Mayweather, Miguel Cotto, and Vivian Harris have been busy. Maybe tonight's the night Zhu finally steps down from the throne. And joining me at ringside right now is our Jim Gray. You had an opportunity to do a visit with both Kostya Zhu and Shambe Mitchell at the training camps, Jim, so take it away. Steve, in preparation for this fight with Kostya Zhu, Mitchell was forced to elude the hurricanes of Florida and relocate his training camp to Los Angeles. He is clearly a man on a mission, having fought eight times since their first meeting with the single purpose of getting tonight's rematch. That intensity was apparent when I spoke to him at his training camp. Come on, Zoo. You want to make some real money? You want to be a real champion? 
You want to fight somebody with two legs now? Let's fight. Why in your mind do you feel he owes you? Well, um, I, I put my belt on the line. I went in there with a hurt leg and gave him a fight that he probably hasn't forgotten. And do you regret that? Because just moments before the fight, you almost didn't come out of the dressing room. Right, I, I almost didn't, but I don't regret it. People were saying that, you know, God, he was in that fight and, you know, I had him winning. And he had a hurt leg. I think in, in the seventh round, um, I, I got thrown oh, down oh. and, um, Whole leg just, I couldn't feel anything. But I ended the round. When I came back, uh, my cornerman asked me, what's wrong? I was like, I can't, I can't feel anything in my, I can't feel anything. And um, he was like, what, well, I'm not letting you go back out there. It's, not, it's on you, how you want to go? I'm so numb down here, yo. I'm trying to move around, I can't really move around. You kind of were non-responsive when your corner said they were going to stop the fight. You just kind of sat there and took it. Why? They wouldn't let me, the, the, the doctor was going to stop it also so it was nothing i could do it's like you know out of my hands did you in your heart think that you were winning that fight um i thought i was winning the fight um so it doesn't matter what other people tell no, you it doesn't matter what other people tell me i i thought i was winning the fight at this time. are you being honest with yourself yeah i, I mean i'm i'm so close i was so close and so sean bay in your mind it was all just your leg just the injury yeah just the injury three judges saw it otherwise yeah. How do you explain that? I thought I was a hit, so it doesn't matter what you know what anybody says. You know, here we are, right here and right now, and this is what's going to matter. Do you regret that you didn't fight the decision and that you didn't push harder to continue? No, I don't regret it um, because maybe I wouldn't be sitting here now. You know, maybe I wouldn't be getting a, a rematch or anything. Or maybe I would have went back out there and injured my knee even more. How's your knee? It's repaired. Everybody wants to say it's at a hundred percent. It's 100% at birth. That's it. After it's injured, it's 75%. Are you building it an excuse? Oh, no. Come on. You've gone on with your career. You've been very successful since that evening. But you need, to a certain degree, Costa Zoo, otherwise you feel invalid. I, I feel as though that I need to fill that void in my life. I need to fill that space. I think he needs me also, so we need each other. Now, Shambay Mitchell needs a win here tonight, not only to fill the void that he just spoke of, but to be recognized as the best 140-pounder in the world. Now, Costa Zoo, on the other hand, feels that there is no question as to who reigns supreme in the junior welterweight division. In Zoo's eyes, tonight's rematch is not to settle any old score or to end any lingering questions from their initial encounter, but rather to fight the best possible opponent. I spoke to Zoo a bit earlier about his return to the ring for the first time in 22 months. What's it like for you not to have fought for almost two years? Missed a lot. And what I did find out, it's not only I'm missing the sport, the sport missing me. What do you recall, Costa, about your fight with Sean Bay Mitchell four years ago? It was close, last first four rounds. It was close, I'm not saying it wasn't close fight. Uh, but uh, from that time forward, um, stronger, stronger, and stronger. And Zoo just doesn't let up. Relentless pursuit. Do you think he could have continued? This is was proper injury, I do believe. Uh, I mean, uh, he hurt himself. But the way he talked, he said that he's not quitted. He's going to help him. But he forgot one thing, that you got cameras around him. What do you want to do, champ? I'm going to stop it. I'm going to stop it. It's on you how you want to go. What do you say? I'm going to stop it. I can't fucking move. I'm going to stop it. It's so numb down here, yo. Referee. I'm trying to move around. I can't really move around. Oh, you're okay? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to stop it. Why haven't you fought Sean Bay, aside from your injuries, and let so much time go by? The first of all, I'm saying to myself, why should, should I? Uh, the way he conduct himself after the fight, the way he's uh, disrespect me, I don't like this. Uh, why give him the rematch in the end? Because he proved that he's number one contender. And when it's been written that maybe you were trying to duck Sean Bay Mitchell or maybe you didn't want to fight again, what was your reaction? I'm saying I don't care, really. Uh, I know who I am. My real fans know. No Did it me. bother you this was being said, though? No, not at all. Doesn't bother me at all. How would you describe the shape of your shoulder now? 
I don't, it don't bother me. I don't have any signs of injury at all. Uh, look like I forgot completely about the injury. Uh, and the way I develop muscle, uh, you cannot tell that I had the injury. You are the one person, Costa, who can make Shambay Mitchell's career. In other words, he needs you to validate his career. Do you feel at all the same way in return about him? He proved that he's number one contender and he's got uh, interim, interim championships. It's mean, uh, it, if I won't fight for this particular time, I can lose my title. It's, uh, it's a matter of principle, I have to fight him. Now, Steve, there are two things that are very apparent to me having spent time with these two guys. First of all, Sean Bay Mitchell and the way he went about this has gotten underneath the skin of Costa Zoo, and Zoo does not appreciate it at all. And second of all, this fight is much, much more important to Sean Bay Mitchell than it is to Costa Zoo. This validates him. To Zoo, it's just another fight. And another note, uh, some people feel that Zoo uh, may have made a mistake by not taking a, a tune-up. I asked him about that, and he simply said uh, it just uh, wasn't meant to be. He just wants this fight. That's all that's on his mind as we turn back over to uh, Al Bernstein. And Al, the first fight certainly had plenty of action, drama, and roughhouse tactics. Are you expecting more of the same in the sequel? Yeah, you know, rematches are always very, very tricky to analyze because they seldom produce the same results as the original, even if the same man wins. That's especially true in this match because we've had a long period of time since the first fight. And because of the injury and layoff issues facing Zoo, but when you strip it down to the basics, we have two men who like to think of themselves as boxer punchers, but one is certainly more of a boxer, the other is more of a puncher. Charmay Mitchell is the boxer in this equation, and lateral movement is essential, and he has to be ready to do it for 12 rounds to win this fight. Zhu is very physical in their first match. Mitchell has to avoid roughhousing inside. One punch at a time won't do it for Charmay. He needs combinations, and even though this jab fell short in their first match, it did set up a good Mitchell left hand. And without the jab, this left hand might not have landed. So two punches better than one tonight for Charmbe. Costa Zoo often loses early rounds, but he has great patience, dogged determination, and he'll need both tonight. The rougher the better on the inside for Zoo. And landing the right hand helped him beat another crafty southpaw, Zab Judah. In his first fight with Mitchell, Zoo avoided this Mitchell left hand and then countered expertly with his own right. He hopes for more of this tonight. So here in Arizona, a most curious locale for this event, the fight the boxing community has been waiting for at 140 pounds. Will Zoo Mitchell, too, be worth the wait? Set for the ring walks to ring announcer Jimmy Lennon, Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come for the long-awaited rematch for the Junior Welterweight Championship of the World. Prepare to welcome the boxers as they make their way to the ring. First, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the challenger, here comes Shambe Mitchell.
extremely anxious. Sean Bay Mitchell calling this a do or die situation. Entirely understandable that he'd once totally given up on this fight. Now, almost amazingly, after the two postponements, just moments away from the defining fight of his career. Every night for the last three and a half years, I dare say he's thought about this moment, Steve. He won't say it's his career-defining fight for sure, but you got to know he feels it. Since that first fight with Zoo, Mitchell said he's had only one thing on his mind, a rematch with Costa Zoo. Back up to Jimmy Lennon, Jr. And now making his way to the ring, ladies and gentlemen, accompanied by top Russian pop star vocalist Larissa Dolina. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the champion, Kostya Zoo. Seriously contemplating retirement, Costa Zoo is ready to finish what he started some three and a half years ago. Checking the ropes in a very large ring, 22 by 22, which Al should favor Mitchell, yes? Mitchell is the boxer, and you would think this ring would be beneficial, and really, it was Zoo's people that put this promotion together. They may rue the day they allowed this ring to be large. Kostyazu making the trip all the way from Australia to Glendale, Arizona to fight American Shambe Mitchell. The Australian flag supporting Kostyazu, originally, of course, from the former Soviet Union. Let's size them up right now. As we check out the numbers, we go to the tail of the tape. Sue, of course, was in his prime the first time he fought Mitchell. He's now 35, Mitchell 34. The height all even, and a five-inch reach advantage for Shambay Mitchell. Yesterday's weigh-in, both came in right on the money at the 140 limit. And a check of the notable unified rules for this world championship fight. There's no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental headbutt occurs before the end of the fourth round, the fight's ruled a no decision. If it happens after the end of round four, they go to the scorecards. So here at the Glendale Arena in Glendale, Arizona, getting ready for our main event, Kostya Zhu versus Shambay Mitchell. The rematch with the IBF 140-pound belt on the line. The official introductions from our ring announcer, the classy Jimmy Lennon, Jr.
Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the Glendale Arena here in Glendale, Arizona for the featured bout of the evening brought to you by Vlad Wharton's Millennium Events in association with Gary Shaw Productions, Ring Pros, Nemiroff, and Showtime. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the IBF, President Marion Muhammad, Supervisor Aaron Kaiser, along with the Arizona State Boxing Commission. The chairwoman is Mary Rose Wilcox, Commissioners Richard Saunders and Lionel Ruiz, and the Executive Director John Montano. Our physicians at ringside, Dr. Robin McDougal and Dr. Charles Howard. Timekeeper at the bell, Martin Dominguez. Keeping count of the knockdowns, Bill Buck. Introducing to you our three judges scoring this bout from ringside. From Washington, D.C., Paul Artiste. From Phoenix, Arizona, Howard Ritchie. And from Lennox Head, New South Wales in Australia, John Wright. Now presenting our referee in charge of the action, working in this, his 77th world title bout, Raul Kais Sr. All right, fans, here we go with our main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Junior Welterweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, Live from Glendale, Arizona, it's showtime! Introducing to you first, the challenger on my left. He is fighting out of the blue corner, entering the ring wearing black and gold trunks. Fighting out of our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., by way of Tacoma Park, Maryland. He weighed in at the junior welterweight limit of 140 pounds even. His record stands at 55 wins, three losses with 31 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the former WBA super lightweight world champion and the current interim IBF junior welterweight champion of the world, known as the little big man, introducing Shambe Mitchell. Across the ring, the defending world champion on my right, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks, fighting out of and representing Sydney, Australia, by way of South Russia. He weighed in the same as his opponent, 140 pounds even. His record stands at 30 wins, only one defeat, one no decision with 24 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the former undisputed world champion at 140 pounds, the current WBC super lightweight champion emeritus and the defending IBF junior welterweight champion of the world. Please welcome the Thunder from Down Under, introducing Kostya Once again, our referee in charge, Raul Kais, now to give instructions, 12 rounds of championship boxing scheduled. gentlemen I give you instructions downstairs remember obey my commands at all times and above all protect yourselves at all times right here is fine keep your punches up good luck to both of you remember here's fine let's go this fight for more than just Sue's belt it is for supremacy in boxing's best division arguably no matter the circumstances, the always supremely confident Kostyazu, a very strategic fighter who prepares meticulously for each opponent. He's had almost two years to think about what he's going to do tonight against Shambay Mitchell. 
Mitchell, meanwhile, single-minded in purpose. He has done nothing but get ready for this moment by staying extremely busy. The biggest difference for Mitchell entering this fight with Zou as opposed to the first one, he now has two good wheels. He'll have to use those wheels plus a lot of head movement to avoid Zou's power in activity or not. And early in this fight, uh, Costa Zou is often a slow starter. In fact, Hugo Pineda, another lefty, had him down in the first round when they fought. Uh, Zab Judah controlled him early. So these early rounds are ones that Mitchell would like to get off to a good start in. And Costa Zou do what Felix Trinidad did recently and look even better than he did previous to his comeback. Well, there were no knockdowns in the first fight, but several takedowns and throwdowns, a very rough and tumble affair that at times resembled an alley fight. A key factor here tonight could be the referee. Yeah, Raul Caiz Sr. And, he, and uh, Gary Shaw, the promoter for Sean Bay Mitchell, said he was going to remind Caiz several times in the dressing room and then when they got back out here in the arena about the fact that he has to watch Zoo roughhousing with Mitchell. So he wants that firmly implanted in his mind. More than once in the original affair, Zoo brought Mitchell down hard to the canvas, claiming he was being held and just trying to break loose. Mitchell differs, but also said he didn't blame Zoo if the circumstances were reversed said Sean Bay. He said he'd do the same thing, but he, doubt, he doubts it will happen again. Both men working on the inside. Sean Bay trying to kind of hold him so Zoo can't work. You know, the, the left shoulder of Zoo, which was repaired by surgery, good left hand by Mitchell. We've seen Zoo use that left hook already three or four times, so clearly he may be telling us the truth when he said that shoulder's not bothering him. So the first effective punch thrown by Mitchell. Here in the rhythm. And there's that little hook on the inside by Zoo. On the inside, he's throwing that punch very, very well. That bodes well for him. Clash of heads there. Which is going to happen with a southpaw and a right-hander. We approach the final 30 seconds of the opening round. It's early in this fight, but Mitchell is allowing himself to be handled on the inside a little bit more than I think they would like by Costa Zoo. There's some blood from the bridge of the nose of Costa Zoo from the clash of heads. Wow. Right off the bat of the first round, it, it just surfaced. Blood, bridge of Costa Zoo's nose as the heads come together. the bell for round one. They'll attend to that cut. Let's see if it's going into the eye. Sean Bay Mitchell had his moment certainly in that first round, landing a good straight left hand as Zoo came in kind of squared to him. And there you see Zoo using the left hook, uh, which he used effectively, and that's Mitchell with his head in position where it may have happened. Let's see the clash of heads. They come together, yeah. And really, Zoo created that as much as Mitchell did. So Costa Zoo got the worst of it, but he was stepping in, not intentionally, but it was his body weight coming forward that created that. So an unintentional collision of the heads and Costa Zoo has a cut open up on the bridge of the nose. Johnny Lewis, his trainer and cut man, jumped right on it. Well, you hate to think of the irony that this fight also could play out where the scorecards would have to be, uh, be gone to before the 12 rounds is over. We hope that won't be the case. It looks like it's sort of on the eyebrow, bridge of the nose, but they're uh, under control right now, but who knows? You know, Sean Mitchell is making a choice, it strikes me, to fight on the inside a lot more than he has to in this big, giant ring uh, where you know he wants to use his uh, mobility. He's not doing it as much as I think they would like. 
A little bit surprising here at the outset that Shonda Mitchell doesn't use his uh, boxing skills, his movement, his side to side against the uh, the powerful Kostyzu. He just got rattled by a straight right hand, the signature punch of Kostyzu. It's the punch he used to take Zab Judah out, another left hand. And again, he's got Mitchell in trouble on the ropes. Here in round two, Mitchell's down. Very smart. He's doubling and tripling that jab, and it's just offsetting Costazu's attack enough, Steve, so that he can't quite get to him. Very smart effort by Mitchell. And then Mitchell on the canvas for the third time in his career. It happened against Levander Johnson in 94 and Felix Flores in 2000. the second and Mitchell with a left hook another left hand by Shante Mitchell well Costa Zou getting in a nice short hook as well and I think wobbled Mitchell right at the end of that round Started the trouble for Mitchell, and uh, it's a punch he used to get Zab Judah out, and it's been an effective punch here against Mitchell. There he put him in against ropes and, and followed up with the left hook, which he's been landing very effectively. So the left shoulder that was operated on not affected. Now Mitchell did land a good straight left hand, but at the end of this round, there's the solid left hook from Costa Zoo that hurt Mitchell. That's a really important punch, that left hook. And Mitchell with a welt forming over the right eye as we enter into round three. Mitchell with a lot more movement all of a sudden. After tasting the leather, another straight right hand upstairs by Costa Zoo. Another one, and down he goes again. Testing the courage and chin. 
of Sean Bay Mitchell, who's been down two times in two rounds. Give Mitchell credit to down so early in this round, and still he's doing enough to hang in there. Again, Shabby Mitchell on very unsteady legs. This has been such a sloppy effort so far for Mitchell. Not a disciplined, uh, skilled boxing match like he anticipated showing us. And of course, the complete antithesis by Sue, who sends Mitchell back with another hard right hand. And now digging to the body, Mitchell's ready to go again. Down for the third time in the fight. He's got 21 seconds to go here in round three. Down two times in this third round. So goes to work, and that's it. It's over here in the third round. And Pastor Zou prevails in the rematch. Just like that. For Charmay Mitchell, the supreme disappointment of his career, but a remarkable performance by Costa Zoo after a 22-month layoff, normally not a quick starter to begin with, he comes in here and completely dominates uh, through two, two rounds plus. It's a, really an extraordinary effort by him at age 35. Unofficially 248 of round three. The veteran Costa Zoo. And you know, an interesting note, the press that voted on who they thought would win this fight, 44 picked Mitchell, 33 picked Zoo. So this was not Mitchell was not an opponent that a lot of people didn't have confidence in coming into this fight. Well, a lot of good guys out there as possible future opponents for Costa Zoo. Ricky Hatton, of course, is a likely choice. Mayweather, Cotto, Vivian Harris. Vivian Harris is here with his trainer, Manu Stupa. Right now, these fans, and you see some of the Russian fans, basking in the moment for Costa Zoo. Uh, many doubters coming into this fight, but he really took away all doubts with this performance. We look at this, the knockdowns in this round. Um, two knockdowns. The right, straight right hand, which had knocked Mitchell down earlier in the fight. Zoo has a way of getting that in against lefties. It's not always possible with just a, a lead right, but Zoo has a way of doing it. Did it against Zab Judah and has done it here tonight against Charmbe Mitchell. Then, later in the round, he continued the onslaught. Again, the right hand was the primary weapon that sent Mitchell against the ropes. And then, very, very good work here. That was a tremendous left hook to the body. And the economy of punches there. Very accurate throwing only what he needed to. And that was just too much for Charvet Mitchell and Costa Zoo. Had really created some issues for him. And then finally, the coup de grace as he uses again the straight right hand, works very effectively. And Charvet Mitchell is down for the final time. And Costa Zoo has this very rewarding victory after a long layoff, two injuries, and many people suggesting he might be at the end of the road. Not so. Some three and a half years after winning the first fight, Costa Zoo takes the rematch, retains his IBF 140-pound belt. Although many still view him as the undisputed champion, finally after two postponements due to injuries, the case is closed. He does it in convincing fashion over Shambe Mitchell. Zoo upping his record to 31 and 1, one no decision, 25 knockouts. Mitchell falls to 55 and 4. His first loss since February 2001, Mitchell, when he first met Zoo. Let's get it up to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of two minutes, 48 seconds in round number three. The winner by way of knockout and still the IBF junior welterweight champion of the world, Kostya.
So Kostya Zhu over Shambe Mitchell, unable to exact his revenge over the 35-year-old. Zhu just comes in here and, and marches through Shambe Mitchell without any problem whatsoever. The man who was born and raised near Siberia learned to box in the rigorous Soviet system. His father worked in the factories, came to Australia after the 91 World Championships with his future wife, one suitcase, and a thousand bucks in his pocket. It's an extraordinary story, and he is now 14-1-1 and in championship matches. He just doesn't know how to lose the big matches, really. And the one he lost to Vince Phillips, he rededicated himself to the sport after that, Steve, in terms of conditioning, and said, I had to become a better athlete after that, and since then we've seen him, in terms of condition, much better. That was his wake-up call. Let's get it up to Jim Gray. Jim? All right, thank you very much, Steve. Costa, congratulations to you. I guess a two-year layoff is the way to go. Were you sharper than you thought you would be? Look, it's uh, it's only three rounds. <laughs> it's not very hard. Uh, I mean, hard to say this. Uh, I'm sure it's a great performance. Great, great performance. First round was, as always, uh, rush, rush, rush. The accidental headbutt, a bit of scar. Did that concern you when that happened? Oh, look, it's nothing concerned me. Look, we are in a tough business. And anything can happen in the, in the face, in the hands, in the, anything. But it doesn't matter. What enabled you in the second round to pull the trigger on that right hand because that basically turned the whole fight toward you? I remember I told you before, I've got great advantage of, of some other boxers. I've got power in the hands. I never really expect to reach this uh, in, in so early rounds with the right hand. With the left, yes, but not with the right. Uh, but it's worked out. I mean, we spent lots of time to work on particular this, with this particular punch. Uh, it's worked out, as I said. As, as you know, history of fighting me left-handers, uh, I fought in them very well, and uh, that's the key for me because I know how to fight them. Are you a better fighter tonight than you were in the past couple of years? I'm not talking about the time you took off, but when you were active. I think I'm uh, smarter, you know. You know, when you've got time off, you can realize a bit different. You're watching the tapes, you're sitting and thinking. I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinker. I like to think. I like to look around different things, and um, it's work out. I mean, uh, I work a lot on this fight. It took me two years to get this fight on. It's been, imagine, uh, three preparation. Three preparation I work on. I study. I write everything down on the paper, and it's work out, as I said, well. Do you now want to continue in this or, or what do you do from here and how do you evaluate this? I remember I said to you, uh, I want big fights. So if where do you, you go? If you go, guys show me the big fights, let's do the business again. If not, look, I have to consider something else. I have to come home first, enjoy myself. You know, even I've been two years off from the rink, uh, it's three preparation, it's nine months. from. I got, the, I got the indication from you <laughs> when I came to see you in training camp that you're enjoying spending time with your kids and, and, and this fighting isn't isn't exactly what you want to do for a whole lot longer. Look like a beautiful summer coming up in Sydney. <laughs> uh, it's a school holiday. I will have lots of time to spend with the kids and uh, it's, uh, it's giving me a smile on my face. Before we look at the knockdowns, I want to ask you, how much did Shambe before the fight annoy you in these two years with some of the statements that he had made that you had felt were derogatory? It's a great thing that I had to sp spoke with Shambe right now. And we discuss, this is business, nothing personal. And that's what I respect. It's nothing personal. Uh, look, I'm a different person. Shamba is different. Everyone is different. Uh, someone likes to talk. Someone lo doesn't like to talk. I never like to talk. I never like to show. Because what my father teach me in my life, that whatever you say, you have to uh, stick with this. It's whatever you uh, say, it's mean it. It's mean. For me to say something, I don't like to disrespect people. We've got en enough violence in life. Uh, and uh, that's why I wanted this as a business, sport, great sport, that's it. Let's take a look at what happened here when you got him in trouble here in round two. Tell us what's going on right here, Kostya. As far as I remember, it was one-two combination. Boom. One it's right the first there. punch, yep. Uh, probably second, second one. You see, I'm uh, taking my time. I'm uh, taking my time. Uh, uh, I know he's uh, got him another one. You were just lining him up. <coughs> I can I can say look after come back I've come back after these punches, and fight again for nearly all the round. It's a great great achievement. And I mean, uh, we can take head off from Shamba. I mean, he proved that while well, he's uh, he was interim champion. And now we go to the third round here. Did you know it was only a matter of time? 
Oh, look, it's a perfect one-two combination. Uh, it's like a, uh, in, the, in the book. I mean, it's perfect timing, and uh, I never expect, as I said, never expect this timing to come up in the, in the early rounds. I thought it was going to be a bit later, but it eventually would be. But look. And here's the end of the fight. Were you surprised he got up? Oh, look, of course it's surprised. It's, I mean, when you hit him so hard, it's, uh, it's not easy to recover. But again, a take off from Shamba. Uh, he did a tremendous job uh, to just fight back in the well. Kasti, let's uh, stick with us here for a second. We've got Shambe Mitchell here, who's getting ready to leave the ring. Shambe, uh, as we look here at the final knockout here at the end of the fight, what was going through you right here? He, he seemed to catch you in the second round, and you couldn't recover. Was that the case? Yeah, he, just, he, he caught me with a real good punch, and then he, he came behind with um, some other punches, and um, I just couldn't get my head. But I, that's why I sat there for a minute and, and then got up. Um, I was going to always fight. Um, I'm a warrior just like he's a warrior, you know, and um, um, whether I get knocked down or, you know, knocked down, I'm going to get up. I'm going to get up and fight. You had based, in a lot of ways, your career on this rematch and, and getting a second chance from the disappointment of a couple years ago with your knee. Uh -huh. How disappointing is this uh, tonight to, to be in this circumstance? Um, things can happen. Anything can happen in boxing. It's just like when I said when I first came in the first time, you know, anything can happen in boxing. And um, one punch could, could change, you know, change, change um, a fight all the way around. Um, I'm not disappointed, man. You know, I, I fought. You know, he, he caught me with good punches and, um, you know, I got up. And, 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 you know, I, I fought on. But um, he's a great champion. And, um, you know, th this thing is, is a business. It's always been a business. And as much as I may talk and as much as may we may go at each other with words, um, it's always a business. And um, I think he's a, a great businessman, and he gave me a, a second chance. Costa said that you had some words to him privately. Can you share with them publicly? Because you had been, at least in his mind, derogatory to him over the past couple of years? Oh, no. Um, I, I told him, you know, this is a business. You know, um, uh, he, he's, a, he's a great champion. And um, it, it's never been personal. It, this is not, man, look, boxing is not personal. It's just like Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali was all business. And it's about getting the business done. It's about getting the money and, and things of that nature and fighting each other. And um, that's what we've done. And um, he came out victorious. I, I was just, you know, it wasn't my night tonight. <laughs> That's Bay. all. Thank you for taking and, and the time. I shall we move up. It. You know, I shall move up and, 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 and go on. I'm, I'm able to, you know, fight another day. <laughs> we look forward to that. Feel better. Thank you. All right. Final thought. Vivian Harris, is, is, is that the name maybe you're looking at now? Uh, I said any big names. Any big names. Well, rattle them off for us. Who, who would you like it to be? I don't care, guys. I don't care. If it's going to be big fights, look, we, I come back to the States. Well, look who we got coming in here. Here's Surprise Manny me. Stewart. You look so strong today. <laughs> Manny Stewart and Vivian Harris, if we can get Vivian in here. Okay. What do you think of this guy, Costi? He's a big name. He's a WBA champion. Yeah. Look, I, I've just seen only a couple of fights of him, only, because never had a chance really to see him. Uh, look, I know he's a, world, he's a world champion. Look, it's, uh, it's great. We'll have to get you some tapes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what do you think about that, Vivian? Is something um, you'd Kassi. obviously be interested in, right? Yeah, definitely. I would, I would, I'm definitely interested in fighting Costa Azul. You know me, you're a great champion, and you know me performing a good fight tonight, and I definitely would like to get an opportunity to fight him. Vivian, thank you for your time. Costa, congratulations. It was a superb performance. Thank you. Okay. Let's go back to you, Steve.